Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me tmaso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmaso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details. Today we're discussing a watch that was officially launched in 2011 but really didn't hit its production stride until 2013. Even then, there were fits and starts for this Patek Philippe 5235G regulator. And the watch represents a real breakthrough, not just aesthetically for Patek Philippe, but also technologically, as it is an all new movement family, as well as the embodiment of the technologies developed by the Advanced Research Series of the 2000s. So the watch is 40.5 millimeters in white gold, really gray gold, more on that in a moment. It's 10.4 millimeters thick, and it's 48 millimeters from lug to lug across the wrist with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. When I put it on my wrist, my wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference. It wears nicely. It's fairly compact. It's a little bit smaller by about one millimeter, just a little bit less than one millimeter compared to the newer 5236 Perpetual Calendar. They're similar in shape and only slightly different in size. The watch will easily fit underneath the dress cuff. And you can see across the wrist, these lugs are really nowhere near the edge of my wrist. So you could probably wear this watch on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference and you'd find that it wears quite well, and I am pulling the strap tight. The strap, large rectangular scale alligator leather, dark blue, high gloss. We have a folded edge, a monotone stitch on the bottom calf skin. You can see this is a Patek Philippe factory strap in brand new condition. And one of the reasons I shot this watch is because it's the only instance I can recall of finding an example equipped with a full deploying clasp. As standard for this watch was a unique vintage inflected pin buckle, but someone stepped up, paid a couple of thousand extra dollars, and equipped this with the upscale option, which is the full Calatrava cross buckle folding clasp in white gold. So this one is a little bit richer. You can see that Calatrava cross, the symbol of the company, and then there is a friction fit system that snap shuts it and holds it fast. And the advantage of a clasp over a pin buckle is that it makes it harder to drop your watch while donning or removing at bedside. Now you can see this example has some burnishing and marks of wear on the case. No denting, nothing deep enough that you could feel it with a finger. Just little marks, perhaps from setting the watch or winding the watch manually. And the nice thing here is that this is an unrefinished watch. So while it does feature marks of wear, that means you can have a little bit less care and concern when actually using the watch in the real world. It can always be refinished at Patek, but it's only factory metal once, and all of the original factory metal and definition is still here which is why I kind of like it this way. Now the case is derived from the historic 3448 and 3450 perpetual calendars, which had a very sheer cylindrical case profile, conical bezel, and then sharp angular and short cropped lugs, and that's what we have here. We have contrast between satin and polished, and then if you look, you can see that the bezel is actually slightly stepped in from the case band to visually thin out the watch. We've got the Calatrava cross on the crown, and then a very slightly boxed and cambered sapphire. The dial is one of the highlights of this watch. Note the Patek Philippe logo and the city of origin. Those are actually engravings in the dial rather than print. Now there's a couple of different silvers. You can see a lighter silver is used for the brushed minute track outboard and then for the sunken sub-registers, each of which features a concentric pattern. At center, we have this curtain-like, almost stainless steel-inspired silver satination that runs top to bottom. And then we have printing, all the printing, even on the calendar discs, is blue on silver for a lovely contrast and a little splash of color. We have a regulator style dial, much like a vintage regulator clock, which often would be used in watchmaking studios to set watches for chronometry tests. And so we have the hours, the minutes, and seconds. That's what regulator means. It means it separates what are usually superimposed functions or paired functions, hours, minutes, and seconds. Now this is a modern Patek Philippe caliber, which means when you put it in setting mode, hacking seconds is activated. This watch has that. You read the hours up at the top, the minutes at the center, and then the seconds are down at the bottom. If you look at the windows for the calendar, you could see that they're actually stepped down rather than cut sheer through the dial to create a more gradual progression from the plane of the dial all the way down to the disc. Also, if you take a look, you could see that the numerals are all intended to match. So you could see that the six matches the six matches the six just like that. Turning it all over, 
we have a movement that was all new with this watch. This is the 31260, also known as the 31260 REG and QA. REG for Regulateur, QA for Quantième Annuel. It is an annual calendar movement. So this calendar on the dial, which is all aperture display and easy to read, this needs to be adjusted only once a year during the jump from February to March. In 1996, Patek patented and launched the first ever annual calendar, which is more sophisticated than a simple calendar and only slightly less sophisticated than a perpetual. The movement was designed for modern watches, so unlike the old and fairly tiny caliber 240 micro rotor, the base caliber here is 31 millimeters, and with the calendar module on top, the movement's total size is 33 millimeters, so it fills a large case back quite well. Snap case back, 30 meter water resistance. You can see the Patek Philippe maker's mark. Today, Patek makes almost all of its own cases. The movement has a beautiful architecture. Architecture is the size, shape, and relative positioning of the pieces. Finishing is how they're decorated. So let's talk about tech specs first. Micro rotor automatic, ceramic bearings for maximum efficiency, 22 karat mass. We have a 48 hour power reserve via a single barrel. We have the Patek Philippe seal, an anti-magnetic Spiromax silicon hairspring, a free sprung Gyromax style balance, six position adjustment. Those features all in tandem mean the watch is guaranteed to run no worse than minus three plus two seconds per day from the factory. Now, because it does feature a full silicon Pulsamax escapement and the Spiromax hairspring, this incorporates most of the features, the silicon components of the advanced research watches, the 2000s. Really, the only thing that's not present here is the somewhat delicate Gyromax SI silicon gold hybrid balance. But we've got Pulsamax, the lever and the escape wheel plus Spiromax max which is the hairspring as a result this watch is hugely anti-magnetic but also because these elements aren't lubricated there's no lubrication on the escapement so over time three four five years as you approach the next service the performance of the watch doesn't tail off as escapement lubricant ages and that's the advantage as a result of the unusual materials and the geometry of these parts it's got an unusual beat rate of 23,040 vibrations per hour so 3.2 hertz. Now in terms of finish and architecture, you can see we have the barrel at the top, then we have this crescent-like sweep of the bridges down to the escapement. Uh, across from the barrel, juxtaposed, we have the rotor. These two things sort of mirror each other. We also have large arcing bridges with individual bridges for the tail end of the drivetrain separated from the barrel bridge and the great wheel. Taking a quick look at the finishing elements, one thing that I note is just how different they are from other Patek watches. Here's a recent 6007, and what you'll notice is that the stripes are really narrow, whereas on the 31 260, the stripes are really broad and luminous, and you can see that gradient from light to dark across their surfaces. And it's a little bit difficult to make a definitive judgment here, but I do believe that the bridge bevels on the regulator caliber are broader than the bevels on the 6007. And I, I really do think it's, it's self-evident just to the eye. You don't even need to measure. What you'll also note is that the prolage on the base plate here is very evenly spaced and quite tight and smaller, requiring more time and more work. Whereas if you look at I'm not just beaten up on the 6007 here, but a lot of other Patek Philippe watches. You can see that the engine turning is fairly large, broadly spaced, and not quite as evenly spaced. So there's a lot to love right there. This is a 29 joule movement. One feature that seems to have changed through the years is that this movement in the current 5235R features 31 joules. You can see clearly on the bridge, this one's 29. So at some point there was a running change to this movement. You'll also note that there are a couple of outward points where bevels converge in pointed tips. And those just aren't that common on other Patek movements, which tend to feature more rounded points. So this is not just a larger and more modern movement. It is also perhaps a little bit more finely finished. As you can see, engine turning in both, both large and small sizes, plus there's satination on the wheels. And if you look closely in the train wheels, there is a level of internal beveling on the spokes as well as the inner circumference of the wheel. Not quite Grubel 4C levels, but the fact that it's there 
is important. Quite a few Geneva Hallmark watches do not even include that refinement. You'll also note that all the jewel and screw sinks have been mirrored. They feature a reamed partridge eye polish. All screw heads are polished with chamfered slots and circumference. And if you take a look, you can actually see that locating pegs that are used to locate the bridges on the base plate, those have been mirror polished on their tops. So a lot to love. Terry Stern has remarked that this is one of the best watches that he's designed in his time leading the company. He thinks it's one of his best efforts, and I agree. This is actually one of my top three all-time favorite Patek Philippe watches. Reach out to me. I am tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.